Harry Krishna, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Harry Krishna's in Britain podcast. This is episode number 75. Uh, a big thank you to everyone who continues to tune in from now all over the world to uh, see what our guests have to say, not what I have to say. Uh, thank you if you're tuning in on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, as you know, the Harry Christians in Britain podcast is brought to you by the Harry Christian Project, which is a British based uh, project that seeks to share Krishna consciousness with um, a new audience, the public. Uh, and also we do lots of kind of devotee supporting activities as well. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit the all important subscribe button so you're updated about future podcasts and video updates. And also, if you're watching this on Facebook, please do like or follow the Harry Christian Project page so you can see what uh, I and others have to say in the future. It's a very active social media channel. Uh, so we've made it to 75, episode 75. I cannot believe it. Um, I don't know if there's anything kind of spiritual auspicious about the number 75, but it is three quarters towards the way to 100 and i thought this podcast would only make it to number 10 and then like i'd get bored and do something else <laughs> but um 75 episodes is quite uh, amazing and i'm pleased to welcome our 75th guest would you please welcome his grace chalokanath prabhu Hare krishna prabhu Hare krishna it's great to have you with us um we're gonna have a fantastic conversation today uh but we're going to kick off with the question I ask every single guest at the start of the conversation. Please tell us a bit about you and where you're from. OK, um, well, uh, not so interesting, but uh, <laughs> I, I come from uh, originally born in 1956 in Bolton. Mm. Uh, so a northerner. But as a teenager, I moved to the Midlands um, and then Bristol uh, University where uh, I got uh, uh, a degree in mathematics uh, with computer science. And uh, this is where I met my wife, um, my current wife, my only wife. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, we met in 1974. So it's, uh, it's been a while. Wow, big year, big, year, big year next year then. A big year. Yeah, 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 yeah. indeed. Amazing. Um, so... We've got three children and five grandchildren. Um, I'm very much, and always was, very much into music. Um, and uh, I have to say, I was uh, a big, a big Beatles fan. Um, they were the soundtrack to my life in the beginning, you know, um, because uh, all through the 1960s, you know. That was my teens, really, uh, growing up. So um, so, you know, in, in relation to uh, spiritual life, um, it was, in a way, through the, the music of the 1960s, which was all about peace and love. And that uh, does sound like a cliche, peace and love. But if you think about it, uh, the best thing we can have is love, you know? It's so important. And we're not talking about romantic love, but a higher love, you know? Um, and peace, who doesn't want peace, you know? Um, I'm sure people in Ukraine would, uh, would want peace, you know? Um, there's so much war going on so much suffering in this world and actually it's not boring to have peace it's uh, it's really important and especially to have inner peace you know uh, so to be like uh, a candle in a windless place you know peace of mind like uh, patanjali's yoga sutras talk about the purpose of yoga is uh, uh, ch uh, was it uh, Chitta Vridi Vritti Nirodha to quieten down the mind? The thoughts are like waves tossing here and there. So to bring that to, uh, to a peaceful state. So um, my uh, introduction into Krishna consciousness was uh, many many pronged actually. 
I can think of three different things. So the first thing was uh, in 1967, uh, the Beatles uh, brought out a, a song called I Am the Walrus. And in that song, John Lennon put these lyrics, uh, elementary penguin singing Hare Krishna, you know, and that stuck out I, at the time. I was only, uh, what, 10 or 11 years old. And um, that stuck out. Harry Krishna, what's this? I didn't know what it was. But as you do, you um, what, when you, uh, with, with the music, you learn the words of these songs and you, and you run around singing them to yourself. So, so many times I must have, have chanted Harry Krishna without knowing anything about what I was actually chanting. It was just words in the song. But you can appreciate this was a fenceless chanting, actually. But it was not pure Shuddha Nam. I didn't know what I was chanting. But um, it was what you might call Namabas. And I'd chanted that for many years without knowing. It must have had some effect. And um, so that was 1967. And then in 19, by the time we get to 1972, I think, it was when George Harrison uh, released his All Things Must Pass album, which was full of um, <clears throat> Krishna conscious songs, you know? Uh, as, you know, My Sweet Lord, Everybody Knows, was a song that Srila Prabhupada had asked George to write. He said, write a song about separation from Krishna. And so, my sweet Lord, I really want to see you, really want to be with you. And, um, you know, the other song, by chanting the names of the Lord, you'll be free. So I was into that, and to a certain extent, was absorbing a bit of Krishna conscious philosophy uh, through George Harrison. So I have to give the Beatles, and John Lennon was the first person I heard saying Hare Krishna. So I've got to give him some credit. Um, and then we act, I actually met devotees in 1977. And in a way, I'd, I'd been chanting Hare Krishna for 10 years, not properly, but just singing Beatles songs, and uh, met the devotees in Malvern, in the Malvern Hills, in some, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, not sidekicks and misfits, uh, or oddities. Or, or, no, 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 no. It, it, it's <laughs> mystics and psychics. That's Sorry. I, thought, I wonder what you were talking about. Or, or, or it was a, it was a psychics and uh, mystics, or, or it was a mind, body and spirit. <laughs> so lots of people from all different kinds of backgrounds, even people, I think the reason we went, went with my wife, um, she wanted to meet the people from Findhorn. Who were growing giant uh, vegetables and stuff. But anyway, we bumped into the devotees there. Um, wow, 1977 and, in Melbourne. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that was gonna... written, yeah. They uh, were very good. They gave us some halva to it and uh, gave us a talk and had a great discussion. And, and they were very good. They had uh, answers for all the questions. But um, we'd had a bit of a history together, me and my wife, sort of spirit. We were at university studying maths, computer science, but, um, you know, it wasn't the main focus of our lives, actually, the studying. We certainly did the studying. We got our degrees. But being at university was something else, you know. It was about being independent from parents. And the first thing we got into was Buddhism, you know. Um, so we got into Buddhism, but after a while, we got, you know, and if you like Buddhism, it's about very close to Mayavad, the mm. all-pervading spirit, the Brahmajyoti, you know. And then later on, we got into yoga um, and following Iyengar and his methods, which was about Paramatma, you know. Um, so, but then by 1977, we met the devotees that told us all about Bhakti. So it actually, without even planning it or knowing what was happening, 
we progressed from Brahma Jyoti to Paramatma to Bhagavan, just like that. And there's a verse in the Bhagavatam, you know, Vedanti Tattva Vedas, you know, about these three aspects of God. Um, another interesting thing is in, in our, um, in the flat we had, we had these three amazing pictures on the wall and we put them together. We didn't know what they were at all. But one was a picture of, uh, in, they were Indian ones. One was of this individual who had four heads. You could only see three of them, actually. Another one was an individual with four arms. And another one was an individual with the moon in his hair and snake around his neck. So this was Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And we had the pictures on the wall. We thought they were brilliant, but we didn't know uh, what it was all about until one day our landlord came. And this must have been 1976 or something. And he said, um, oh, are you into Hare Krishna? He asked us. And I said, oh, well, uh, not really. We not, you know, of course, we, we did become into it. But at the time, no. And uh, and he said, oh, well, I've been to India and I know all about it. And he started telling us what these pictures were in there. And that was a landlord, you know, it's like uh, an elder, elderly guy about the age that I am now. <laughs> so where did, where did you get these pictures from? You 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 you, you bought them from the somewhere. You you just yeah, put them on on the wall. You just stuck them yeah, on the yeah. wall. And you bought them in the yeah. market. Okay. Because yeah, they looked amazing. You know, like an individual with four arms is quite amazing. You know, <laughs> individual with, with four heads, and then uh, yeah. they all had sort of blue coloured skin, which I think was to portray a spiritual. You know, it's a spiritual thing. You know, not like they actually blue. But anyway, of course, you know, Krishna is is blue. Um, so, uh, but, you know, and, and, and then, as I said, pretty soon after that, we went to this festival and met devotees. I don't know if you know them, but as one was Rohini Nandan uh, and his wife at the time, Radha Priya, and uh, Giana Das, who is now uh, Nemi Maharaj, he's a follower of Naraya Maharaj now, and still Shuddha Prabhupada, actually. But uh, he was called Giana Das at the time. And he had a thing about evolution, you know, trying to disprove the theory of evolution. And, and his wife at the time was called Lilavati, um, <clears throat> an American lady. So those four, uh, they're great devotees. I can remember being at the festival and I saw, it was Rohini Nanda, but I saw this sort of monk looking person walking across by the tents, muttering away to himself, just walking along, mumbling away. And it, well, he was chanting Japa, is what he was doing, but I, I didn't know anything about that at the time. So it just looked like he was mumbling away to himself. But when we actually got to talk to them, um, it was great, you know. So they did inspire us. And we wanted to have a stream of Bhagavatam, but they wouldn't let us have one because we didn't have any money. <laughs> so because we couldn't buy it, we didn't get it. But we got one when we got back to Bristol, which is where we went to university. Uh, we went, we found, we found Bhagavatams in the bookshop. Um, but the biggest influence on me, despite all everything I've told you about, the person. Who I, what, what, there's a certain name for this kind of guru, uh, Vatma, Pradaksha, I can't remember the proper the, the word, but it's the one who introduced you to Krishna consciousness. And I have always firmly believed that that was Srila Prabhupada. I'd never met Srila Prabhupada, but I read his books and I felt a connection with him through his books. And I can remember once uh, my wife Kandalata and I, um, she was called uh, Debbie at the time because we weren't devotees. We just left university and we went to visit one of my friends and he had been given uh, a Sri Zopanishad and he'd taken the pictures out. He'd pulled the pictures out of the book and stuck them on his wall <clears throat> and he'd tossed the book into a corner of the room 
And I can remember picking that book up and reading it. And I thought, wow. I mean, it was that was the first book I read, Sri Shapanishad. And for me, it was like completely clear. I knew exactly what he was talking about. And it was very inspiring. And to that date, when I talked uh, or listened to religious people explaining uh, or people explaining spiritual matters, it was always a little bit difficult to understand what they were on about. And I think in retrospect, because they weren't so clear in their own minds. But um, so that really, uh, so anyway, 1978, um, April 1978, we joined the temple, and um, this was just after Srila Prabhupada had left the planet, which was, mm. I think, was October of 77. We'd been visiting the temples, but we never got to see Prabhupada, and obviously never had the opportunity to take initiation. But anyway, um, we joined the temple. I have to say, I didn't want to, to begin with. I really liked the philosophy. I liked chanting Hare Krishna, uh, but it was my wife that wanted to join. And uh, she joined. And actually for a week, we were separate because she had joined the Hare Krishnas and I decided not to. Um, so when you say join the temple, you you eventually, so, so your wife moved in yeah. to the temple and you eventually then did move in yeah after about a week so you were you were living in bristol previously and you kind of you gave up the flat or the house that you were living in oh well um what happened is uh we left bristol we couldn't get jobs there after graduating so mm. we ended up in pool okay yeah we're actually living in this lovely place in a holiday home in between uh called branksome park between Poole and Bournemouth, beautiful place. And uh, we had jobs and we worked for six months and then joined the temple. And I can remember, uh, because Kundalata, she moved into the temple, the manor, and I mm. can remember visiting the manor a week later and deciding what the hell, you know, I'll move in. I mean, to be honest, I didn't want to move in because of my bad habits. Because I knew if I moved into the temple, those bad habits would have to stop. Mm. So uh, I used to smoke uh, cannabis. You know, that was my thing. And um, I can remember visiting the temple and I thought, I'm going to join. So I went back to our flat in Poole, finished off my last piece of hash, and then uh, cut all my hair off myself, you know, and then moved into the temple. And I never, um, you know, there was no problem giving up these things. As soon as I moved into the temple, everything was wonderful. And I could, you know, really couldn't understand why I hadn't uh, just gone straight there. There was no issue at all. It mm. was all, all in the mind. Um, so, so we both moved into the manor. And um, I, uh, after a while, they sent my wife to... Um, well, my wife joined the mother's sanctum party in London. So we were living separately anyway. I was living in the manor and she was living in London in the, in the sanctum mother's house. And uh, because I had this degree in mathematics, I got uh, given the job of being the treasurer, you know, at the manor, looking after the money, um, counting all the coins and banking them. <laughs> and giving out petty cash to devotees who came uh, for various reasons. Often it was the wives of the, mm. of the householders, wives would come and I, they'd get their five pounds a week, you know, which uh, because it was free board and lodgings in the temple uh, in those days, um, but they needed a little bit of cash uh, for nappies and whatever. For their babies and um <clears throat> five pounds was worth a lot more than it is today but the, nevertheless it wasn't a lot but uh, and, and I, how long did you how long did you serve as the treasurer for it back to Vinantamana? well a couple of years because uh, wow. we lived at back to Vinantamana for a couple of years and then we moved to crew and court 
and we were there for a couple of years. And I was mm. a treasurer, treasurer, all the way through. Um, as I say, I mean, I, I dealt with the day to day, so I kept books and stuff, and I gave out petty cash and counted the coins, of which there were a lot, and used to bag them and bank them. Uh, but I wasn't the main accountant or what, whatever at the temple. That was uh, uh, Jai Lakshman, you may have heard of, you may know him. So anyway, um, so yeah, I started doing that as soon as I came out of the uh, Brahmacharya uh, of the um, the Bacta program. Mm. It was like a mini Brahmacharya ashram, um, but. Um, most devotees, when they come off the Bacta program, went out on traveling Sankatan and, or, and and they came back, lived in the Brahmachari ashram. Um, and I was very lucky because I lived in the treasury. So there was uh, a room with a glass partition and I used to sleep behind the counter. And uh, there was another devotee on the other side of the counter called Shastra Chakshish. And he used to answer all the correspondence. So when people wrote letters and sent them off to the manor, he would answer them. So there was just the two of us in that one room. And so I had a lot of privacy, um, which I wouldn't have got. If I had been in, in the Brahmacharya Ashram, mm, mm. then uh, you don't get privacy, you know, um, very difficult. And perhaps I wasn't that caliber of devotee to be so austere, I could have taken that. So Krishna was very kind to me. And uh, so, but I'll show you in the first year then, 1978. Yes, please. Just, yeah. I'll show you a couple of pictures if, if we if, if, we, if we can still do that. I just check the. Yeah. Excellent. Share away. Oh, you've disappeared. Right. So um, it's a bit small. But there's a picture of us on, uh, I forgot what road that is, but you can see mm. uh, adverts of, of, the, of the goodies. Tim Brooke Taylor, Graham Gardner, and whoever else it was. But this is a Kirtan party <clears throat> with uh, Badger Harry Prabhu. Yeah. There's the one with Mridanga leading it. And I, um, I don't know if you can see uh, my mouse pointer, but that's me. Mm. Um, in white, next uh, with on the cartels, next to Badger Harry. Um, so this was a very early uh, early time. Um, on one occasion, we actually got arrested by the police um, and put us in a van and took us off to the police station for disturbing the peace. <laughs> um, these days, I think the police actually appreciate uh, the devotees, mm. uh, but in those days, uh, you know. But I mean, it, it only it didn't stop us. Um, so this was 1978. So that's you're a, correct, you're yeah. about 22 at this point. Yeah. 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 Um, so those are I mean, Bajahari. I mean, I've seen this photo before, and I always knew that was Bajahari. I mean, I didn't know it was you, if I'm if I'm honest, on the left. No. Those, that, those, that was, yeah, yeah. those are the devotees around in the photo. I mean, are they still around? Do you know? Do you know who they were? Or they are. I know who they are. Yeah. I mean, they're. Where the is ad, ad hoc and that's Das Avatar. Yeah, uh, Das Avatar ended up following Jai Tirtha. <clears throat> um, I think he moved to Hawaii. Um, that was Vinod, the famous Vinod, who was our cook, uh, both at the manor and at uh, Chaitanya College. Mm. And he was married to uh, uh, Jaya, who. Um, who now lives in Glastonbury, but I, I don't think they're together anymore. I don't know what happened to Vinod. Um, and when you say a Dukshire, is that do you mean a Dukshire Krishna who now lives in Scotland? That a Dukshire Krishna or someone else? It was uh, called Adhoxager Das. I don't ah, okay, you know. okay. It's so I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is one devotee here. Um, you can hardly see him. Yeah, yeah. I think it was called back to Matthew, but I think he, he committed suicide uh, later on. So it's not been a good story for everybody. Um, sometimes these terrible things happen, you know? Mm. 
But um, what I can tell you, it, it was a very, I'll show you another picture actually. Now. Yes, please it, do. It was a similar thing, just just showing you the first, the first. Uh... So there we are again, um, this time on uh, Westminster Bridge. Uh, the same bunch of devotees actually, apart from the Kirtan leader. So that's uh, Kula Shaker, who uh, was apparently um, the first uh, devotee to take initiation from Srila Prabhupada in England. Wow. You know, there might be some dispute between him and Dan and Jaya, probably. But, um, you know, so that's very early on. Uh, he wasn't the first English disciple of Srila Prabhupada, though, because that was uh, uh, Sri Patti. Mm. But Sri Patti took initiation in in America. Or Canada. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. I, 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 he wasn't initiated in England, so, but he was the first Prabhupada disciple from an uh, English person. Which year was this photo taken? In which I year? think it was the same year. But 78. Already, yeah, but already my hair had grown a little bit <laughs> from the... Yeah. Previous, you know, so I was needing another shave up. But same position, you know, next to the Kirtan leader, I'm playing cartels. And, and really, you know, all of these devotees were really blissful doing the Kirtan. Um, and it's it's genuine. We're not putting on, on false smiles for cameras. We didn't know we were being photographed, actually, at the time. And it was fantastic. And something I, I used to love doing is going out on, on Harry Nam, which was, in my personal view, and probably still is, this is the proper uh, uh, Harry Nam Sankirtan. Mm. And this this devotee with the Murdanga you mentioned, is yeah. is he still around now? Is he? He's still... passed away now. Okay, uh, I can't remember. Maybe uh, four or five years ago, perhaps. Mm. He was a Facebook friend of mine at that time. Um, but yeah, and he had a full head of hair as well. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, that that does happen with devotees, you know, especially the householders. Mm. <laughs> Good. Um, no, I, I, I think it's great personally. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would say, hasten to add, uh, you don't need, uh, having a shaved head doesn't make you a pure devotee. Mm. Putting tilak on your forehead doesn't make you a pure devotee. Wearing robes doesn't make you a pure devotee. But chanting the holy name of Krishna with devotion in your heart, that does make you a pure devotee. So substance over form you know mm -hmm. um but then again it was important to wear clothes like this because it was part of the uniform if you like so people would know there's the harry krishnas but i would also say if you're going to dress like that you need to behave yourself <laughs> because it's very very important if people see somebody dressed as a harry krishna devotee doing nonsense it is not good um actually you know so um but yeah so these are i was probably still on the back to program at the time i don't know wow but great photo anyway. wonderful photo yeah 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 they're, they're important to me so that was over westminster bridge that one mm. um so just the early days and uh, both of those pictures mean a lot to me and i am extremely proud to have been with those two uh, Kirtan leaders, um, very important to me because they were quite important to me in my spiritual life, you know. I know Badger Harry later on uh, was into the Ritvik uh, movement and uh, I think he upset some people, but I've always had a soft spot in my heart for him. So although I wasn't one-to-one -one in my view of that, uh, you know, for me, Ritvik is something you do while the guru is still on the planet because the relationship between guru and disciple has to be mutual. You can't just decide to be a disciple of somebody without that guru's agreement. Yes, they can be a shiksha, you can be a shiksha guru. You can take instruction from Vedivyas himself, you know, if you read his commentaries on, on 
you read his uh, books and the Vedas and all of that, of course, but not Diksha, not, not uh, you know, uh, initiation uh, uh, guruship. <clears throat> you need both. So, but anyway, you know, uh, Bajahari is very dear to me and I always looked up to him very much so. And interestingly, um, I'm deviating, but um, for some time I played in a band that we called The Inner Light and we played George Harrison songs and we were like playing at Jam Master Me <clears throat> every year for the past five years or so. And of course, um, I played lead guitar, but um, the uh, the lead man doing most of the vocals and strumming away on the acoustic was uh, Makunda or, or Mike, you know, who was Badger Harry's son. Mm. And I used to think this is really weird, you know, that I used to do Harry Nam with Badger Harry, and now I'm playing in a band with his son, who has a lot of similar characteristics to his father, and also his mother, actually. His mother, a uh, very sweet lady, actually. Um, so that, that's quite amazing, really, for me, you know. Can we talk a bit about um, Chaitanya College? Yes. Uh, I, 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 um, I was just kind of in my head mapping out your life. <laughs> it sounds a bit bizarre, doesn't it? Between 1977, I think you uh, met the devotees at Melbourne. Melbourne's yeah. close to that area, isn't it? And ish yeah. in the grand scheme of closeness. Oh, and then you ended up going back there uh, to live at Chaitanya College in uh, 79 80 maybe um yes, so tell right. us a bit of, tell us a bit about that i mean i've been to what is now croom court uh and i i know uh so I, I guess just put some kind of factual context in a lot of devotees some of the younger devotees won't know um croom court was owned by iscon between 1979 and 1984 uh and it was called at the ch time chaitanya college yeah yeah uh, but there's lots of stories about things that happened at Chaitanya College. Uh, so do you want to tell us, you don't have to tell us the stories necessarily, but tell us a bit about you and your involvement there and what what, what was going on and what was happening? Yeah, sure. Well, um, like you say, uh, we moved there from the manor. So it, with the devotees purchased the manor, uh, Chaitanya College. Interestingly enough, Broom Court, Chaitanya College, and we called it CC, you know, which uh, actually covers both Broom Court and Chaitanya College. But to us, it was Chaitanya College. And uh, so, as you said, the devotees bought that in 1979. And I think we moved up there. We were like amongst the first set of devotees to go up and move in, my wife and I. And... Um, it was either late, very late 79 or very early 18, uh, 1980, but I think it was late 79. <clears throat> and uh, a fantastic uh, stately home. Um, so I, I, I'll just give a brief... Uh... Yeah, please do. Just to clarify for me, before 1979, before the devotees bought it, was it called Croom Court then, pre-79? Yes, it had ah. always been called Croom Court, yes. And it, it just that's for five years, it was called something else. Just for Chaitanya that five years. College, yeah. because that's so devotees put their own name on everything, right? <laughs> like, like in France, isn't there? The Chateau in France is, uh, what is it called? Uh, New, New, Maya New Mayapur. Yes, yes. The same. Because the devotees do that, because it has to be Krishnaized. Yeah. You know, okay, so, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. So okay. Here it is. Um, so that's it from one side. You can see the nice lake and the lovely stately home that it is with huge, huge grounds. And there's a picture from 2010 when a group of devotees who used to live there visited. Uh, we were invited there by the National Trust. So that's me. Uh, Rishashuri Devi Dasi and uh, Sri Patti, who uh, I just mentioned, and another one of the buildings. Yeah, please show all the photos. This is fab. So that's another one of the building. So, so in that main building, I'll just come out for a minute. <clears throat> in that main building, 
most devotees lived. So this is the Brahmachari ashram, uh, Brahmachrini ashram, and lots of rooms that were used by uh, householders, who some of them built um, because these are hugely uh, tall rooms, you know, the old Georgian style or whatever style that is, huge distance between the floor and the roof. So they put in uh, an extra floor in the rooms at the, you know, not the whole of the room, but just at one end, uh, which would they'd sleep in, you know, so making good, good use of the space. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we didn't live in the main building. We lived in the gardener's cottage. So at Croon Court, there's a huge garden uh, surrounded by a big wall. And um, at the corner of that uh, was the gardener's cottage, which was a two bedroomed house. It had two bedrooms upstairs, living room downstairs and a kitchen and bathroom. And three devotee couples lived in there. So there was Boomer Dave and his wife up on uh, in one bedroom. Uh, Boomer Dave and Bhavani. And uh, another room was Sakshi Gopal and Jai Rade um, in another room up there. Uh, Kundalata and I lived downstairs in the living room, which was the same size as these uh, bedrooms. And then we all shared the kitchen and the bathrooms. And here is, uh, let me do another share here. Um, here's a picture. I haven't got a picture of the gardener's cottage, but I've got, I've got a picture of me in it. So there I am. Um, and I'm wow. playing my, I've st this was, you know, must have been 1980. Um, yeah, I was young once, or my body was young once. And uh, <laughs> I still, you might, I don't know if you noticed, but this very harmonium is, is what I was playing at that program last week. Wow. So I've, got it. I've had this for like 40, 43 years or more. Um, and uh, or maybe 45 years, I can't remember. Um, but I got it pretty soon after moving into the into the temple at the manor. I used to I learned how to play it in the treasury, and also I used to go hiding in the in the flower room just next to the temple in the temple room at the manor. So in the manor, there's one. Uh, it's it's an exit entrance these days, but it used to be just the flower room. And I used to hide in there to, to practice the harmonium. But anyway, uh, so I still got this harmonium and it's still sounding pretty good. So that's me in that um, uh, gardener's cottage. And mm. our room had a door that went out into the garden. So it was fantastic, you know. And I have to say, um, wonderful grounds. And we used to be able to go for wonderful walks around the grounds through the woods and everything. And, you know, I always used to think that uh, we are so fortunate uh, because this is all Krishna's property, right? And how, you know, how a servant uh, shares the opulence of his master or her master, actually. When you have a servant, they live in the same house and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how we felt. Uh, being in, in Krishna's wonderful property um, as his servants, but being able to, um, uh, you know, uh, partake of the splendorous uh, uh, environment. Um, so... <clears throat> You you just 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 a little observation. You wear glasses now. All the time that I've known you, you wear glasses. Yeah. But you, all the photos you've shown, there was no glasses. Uh, no. This is to do with old age. Oh right. Okay. So, I mean, I've I've had glasses since I was a teenager. I just you're I don't short sighted know. or long sighted. Yes. I I did have glasses actually. I can't see Why? anything. Is the answer? I'm not sure. I keep getting confused in the difference between short and long sighted. I can't right. see anything. I can't even read this text in terms of the, this zoom right. yeah well if you were short-sighted you can you could read a book i can't read, I can't read so you got a little bubble of vision around you if you're long-sighted 
you can't see things that are close and you can see things in the distance. Can't see anything. So naturally, <laughs> I, I was long sighted. Yeah, I can't see anything if I take my glasses off. But when I was young, I did get some glasses, but they hardly magnified anything. It was only because not I had difficulty seeing, but it was, uh, I used to get headaches. So they reckoned I should wear these glasses. But then one day, I had my uh, went to a concert and my coat was stolen and uh, my glasses were in my coat pocket. Oh, and no. Yes, no, but I didn't care. I, I never bothered getting any more glasses. But when I turned 40, I was struggling to read the, the A to Z. Uh, I don't know if you know the A to Z map thing. It's got a picture of the tubes, the London Underground uh, network on the back, and I couldn't read it. And I think, and all the time, I was thinking it's things are not bright enough. <laughs> so anyway, I went to the optician, and they said you, you need glasses now. And it's something like the lens hardens as you get old. So, uh, so now, yeah, I wear glasses all the time. Um, so, one thing is very interesting about Chaitanya College is it had a uh, you, you know before we moved in. Uh, it was it was uh, the nuns used to live there. They ran the place, and there's one uh, building uh, that was a chapel stroke church on the grounds, quite close to the main building, and that became our temple room. And uh, that was um, that was decorated wondrously by a devotee called Kamsa Hanta, who you may or may not have heard of or met. But he was an artist and he decorated that temple room really beautifully. Unfortunately, I haven't got uh, too many pictures of that, but let me just show you um, what Kamsa Hanta did uh, inside. Oh, let's get rid of that. Um, so, uh, Right, so in inside the main building, uh, he painted all of this, all this, and the National Trust have kept the work he did. So um, originally, this was un, it wasn't painted at all. It was just like, you know, white embossed decoration. And Kamsa Hanta painted all of this single-handedly. And here's some more of it a bit closer you can see what he did and it was really beautiful see how he's painted all the fruit yeah yeah uh, really nicely so he did a splendid job an even more uh, splendid job inside the temple room but um anyway uh so all the only pictures i have got of the temple room is these ones because the deities that we had in this temple room in this uh, separate building, chapel, were Panchatattva and Lord Jagannath. So here you go. So wow. So these Panchatattva, because uh, one of my services at uh, at Chaitanya College, I was as well as a treasurer. I was also a pujari, and I used to wake the deities and dress them. Um, I think the dressing was a shared thing. So you'd have a couple of devotees dressing them. Um, I can remember dressing Advaita Acharya on the left here. Um, and then, so we, these deities are, uh, you know, as tall as I was. So they, they may look small. Wow, really? But they're big. You know, I mean, it's like Radha and Krishna at the manor, the same size as that. So may, maybe they weren't as tall as me, but they're so big. So, what, so when when Chaitanya College closed in 1984, what, what happened to all of these deities? Well, I think th this is the Jagannath, Subhadra and Baladev that are now in Soho Street. Ah, OK, OK. Um, so and see how beautifully they, they've made a rath cart for them. Yeah, yeah. And they've got the pancha tat for dancing in front of the rath cart. It's really nice. Um, uh, Panchatattva, I'm not sure where they ended up. They might have been taken to France. I'm not sure. Uh, at the time, I think that's when after, it was after Jayatirtha uh, had left and Bhagavan 
had taken over. Yeah. I think it was under Bhagavan's uh, uh, time that uh, Chaitanya College was sold off. Um, mm. And I think it was just financial difficulties that led to that. I don't know because I wasn't there, you know. Um, so I had, uh, oh, yeah. Are you seeing me again? Yes, uh, no, yeah. I can see you, but I don't know if the viewers can see you. It doesn't, I mean, it, I can see. Oh, ah, no, no, you, no, no. There you go. There we go. <laughs> right. I Zoom, I've never used before. So this is. Wow. Like, is this the first time? Yeah, I, I downloaded the app yesterday, I think. And had a bit of wow, a you look like you're a pro. You know, you're sharing these <laughs> photos and stuff. Well, and... Oh, I suppose it's designed to be easy to use, right? It is. I, I, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, as well as a treasurer and a pujari, um, I was a Gurukul teacher. Um, and uh, I was an academic teacher. So I wasn't uh, an ashram teacher. So the ashram teachers are the devotees that used to look after the children, put them to bed and wake them up and, and look after their personal needs. And uh, I would teach them in the classroom. So I was teaching them maths, Sanskrit. I used to teach them Sanskrit, but I was only two weeks ahead of them, you know, because when I started teaching them, I didn't know Sanskrit. So I had to learn it. And then I'd teach them what I'd learned from these uh, course books, you know. So, you know, I had to write the Devanagari script, some of the rules of grammar. Um, but generally... Normal academic subjects that you'd also get taught in a normal school, uh, mm. state school. Now, I have to emphasize that this Gurukul uh, was a happy Gurukul. And there was no uh, abuse going on in that school. Um, it had people uh, who were who had been professional teachers, you know, so they'd come from uh, what one, be, uh, she became uh, uh, a headmistress in a school afterwards. And I think she might have been a headmistress before she became devoted. But she was a properly trained teacher. So uh, she would help us, uh, you know, in, in how to go about it. And the, chil was... the children that attended the Gurukul, they were devotee children. They lived at Chaitanya College. Yeah, but they lived in the ashram. Once they were in the Gurukul, they lived in the Gurukul ashram. Okay. So their parents were all local. So the parents were also living at Chaitanya College, mostly, mm. or the manor, you know. But the parents had a lot of connection with their children all the time. And uh, uh, Vaishnav was Jayatirtha's son, Manjali's son. He was in the Gurukul also. Um yeah, I, I, I know him. I, I, I know him. Yeah. yeah, so he was, um, he's had difficulty in his life because of what happened, you know, with his father and the whole very disturbing uh, chain of events for him, you know, to see his father taking sannyas, being forced to take sannyas, and then, you know, uh, dying. It's such a very disturbing for him and it has affected his mental health but yes also i know him well he's been to our house quite a lot vish vish Fambara, and we love him uh he's a very knowledgeable boy actually well he's not a boy anymore he's a 40 he's in his 40s now um he's uh very bright intellectually excellent memory remembers all the details but he he, he struggles with depression and whatever um, but let me just show you another another picture, just to back up what I've been telling you. Um, so this picture, this is the Gurukul children. And as you can see, they're all very young. You know, they've got Damodar. He was a right mm. uh, character, Damodar. I'd love to meet him now, uh, but he was... I wouldn't call him naughty, but he was, he was always full of tricks. Lovely boy, though. Uh, Madhu Mangal, uh, Sachi Devi, uh, Radha Kund, I think, was Badger Harry's daughter. 
um, Shantipur, um, Sujata, who was Sudajaya's daughter, and I think that's her sister here. And I think this is, um, I forgot what his name, he was called uh, Srimad Bhagavatam Das. Was he? No, he's called Bhagavatam Rita. No, 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 it wasn't Bhagavatam. <laughs> All these Bhagavat, names. Bhagavat, Bhagavat Purana, he was called. You might wow. know Sri Kanta, I think he's called now. Um, but anyway, that was his daughter. So, uh, and, and there's uh, uh, Jamuna, that one there, is Jai Lakshman's son. I never will never forget these children. I mean, you have to realize that after leave, <laughs> after coming out of the temple and living in the house and all these years passing by. Uh, or to begin with, I could remember everybody's name, but now the memory fades. But these children, um, I'm never going to forget them. But you can see, I mean, they're not putting on an act. They were happy, you know, and there you can see it, you know. Um, and as I say, all their parents were, were seeing them regularly. So it wasn't like being shipped over to Dallas or something. And, like. and all of these children now would be, I mean, if this was pre-82, they're all, uh, I can't do maths very quickly. They're all between the ages of like 42 yeah. and 48 now, yeah, roughly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, they still look like children to me. <laughs> well, they still look young. I often yeah, yeah. Think, oh, that person must be in their 20s, but they're not. They're in their 40s or 30s, you know. But yeah, um, yeah, they're still around. Um, wow. Anyway, so there's the happy children. And we had proper classrooms. So I don't know if it was that when the nuns had the place, if they had classrooms or, or what, I'm not sure. Don't know the history. But um, yeah, um, so when I was the treasurer and pujari, then of course as a pujari, I'd be getting up really early to wake the deities and then doing an offering midday, maybe some offering in the evening. But I could do the treasury work during the day. Um, but uh, once I was a Gurukul teacher, that's a, a day job, if you like, mm, mm. and uh, teaching all day. So then my wife stepped in to do the treasury work. Um, let me see. I'll actually... Uh... You have a photo of your wife in the treasury. Well, <laughs> and maybe maybe you do. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I wish... We, I had more photos, but uh, no, th this is when we visited in 2010. And there's Kandalatra and I standing in front of the treasury. <laughs> so it was a very grand building um, mm -hmm. uh, from court and all the rooms are very grand. But this is on the basement where the servants would be. Um, I don't know if the servants were living there, but they were doing work, you know. And you can see all the pipes at the, at the top there. And, uh, and, and yeah. it's dated 2010. Was this the first time the devotees had visited in, what, 20-odd years? Well, the first time I had. Yeah. Okay. For okay. some reason, the National Trust invited us to go. Mm. And uh, they showed us around. They showed us the bits they'd kept and hadn't changed, like Cancer Hunter's painting work. And they had a little display explaining uh, the history of, of the place. So they had a section for the devotees mm. and the Krishnas. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it, it hadn't been there for all that time. And and I've been there again since. Um, we've had, uh, as you probably know, devotee festivals there. Mm. Mm. Used to do. Um, so down on this floor, which is a bit grim, but I used to come here to chant my rounds, actually. Not sometimes in the treasury, but sometimes just walking around uh, the corridor downstairs here. But the kitchen was here. There was a shop just opposite the treasury uh, where you could buy uh, various things. Um, it sounds very fancy, doesn't it, the treasury? I was chatting to someone at Bhaktivedanta Manor recently, and she, she she reminded me that she works in the treasury, and it just sounds very formal and political, doesn't it? Oh, we work in the treasury. You know, very, yeah, very... well, no. I, mean, <laughs> I was just the guy that counted the cash. So I had a coin machine, a coin counting machine, 
and uh, I'd fill sacks, these sort of small um, containers with all the coins. I'd bag them up into five pound amounts or something. Mm. And then I'd go down to the bank in Pershaw, right next to the uh, Chaitanya College, in my dhoti and tilak and everything, and go in the bank and uh, bank it, you know. But um, my position was a lowly one. I'd give petty cash out to the mothers and uh, sometimes sannyasis would come in demanding money and I'd tell them I can't give them any. They have to go and get a note from the temple president. So that was my uh, way of uh, batting them off. But wow. some devotees thought because of their position, they could come and take what they wanted. And no, that wasn't it. We had special rules, you know, and we didn't want to waste uh, Krishna's money. Um, so did I mention you yeah, the kitchen was down here as well? So sometimes devotees would be uh, milling around wondering, because sometimes on festival days, Vinod, who you, you saw in that Harry Nam picture, mm. is the cook. He did really great because he'd cooking so many different preparations and it was all delicious. But sometimes he was a bit late, you know, and like on a fast day, like Jamastami or something, where we'd been fasting all day without eating anything, devotees would start to like, uh, uh, you know, pace up and down outside the kitchen, wondering when it was going to be ready, you know. So um, I've got fond memories. I don't know if you know Amita, but he used to sell books and various things by mail order. And he had a room, like a little warehouse and, and room, office, down on this floor as well. Um, and I'll just close this. We had, uh, <clears throat> when, when the devotees took over Chaitanya College, they kept the, uh, uh, what would he be called? The care, caretaker? Um, mm. Mm. Anyway, Mr. Edwards, so he would service the boilers and keep the place running. And we kept him on. He was very nice. And there was once, because we didn't watch television or anything, you know. Um, but one once there was a TV program called Credo about the Hare Krishnas. And he invited us into his house, you know, all the devotees went in there to watch that. You know, it was quite a positive. Uh, thing. I think I think I've seen it. I think it might be on YouTube somewhere. Uh, probably, probably in the arc, in the in the. It was a good one, because sometimes some of the documentaries about Hare Krishna have not been very good. <laughs> and it, and it, there was one. What's he called? Uh, that Thoreau guy. Uh, Louis Thoreau. Louis Thoreau. Yeah, he did one when he was with Jai Patakaswami, mm, mm. and it wasn't good. <laughs> it's a shame actually I don't know why not because he was asking Jai Patakaswani some very simple questions he was probing at him you know about all this having so many followers being a guru well Louis Theroux is kind of a very in my opinion he's a very good investigative journalist so he yeah. has to, he has to ask those questions well he does but they could be answered much better than they were that's all I'm saying yeah, yeah. my my memory of that documentary was that on on uh, Jai Bhattaka Swami and Louis Thru and some other devotees were on a boat and the boat got stuck in the bank of the river and Jai Bhattaka Swami said, oh, if you chant Hare Krishna, the boat will come free. <laughs> it, did, it did come free. And it, and it some did. reason, right. I, well, that's, that's, a good, that's a good part. But I do remember that. And it, again, that's on YouTube. If anyone wants to look it up, Louis Thru, Hare Krishna, I'm sure if you search for it, you can watch it. But um, I have to say also that... Um, it's true of the manor and, and both the manor and Chaitanya College is that it was a wonderful, harmonious community of loving devotees. And I was incredibly happy, you know, living in the temple. It was wonderful, you know, had lots of friends. And of course, with so many devotees being there, you, you do sort of mix with the ones most suited to your own nature you know that's only natural but uh, had respect for everybody it was just so wonderful we were actually uh, trying to live the proper Vaishnava life according to Srila Prabhupada's teachings 
And in the main, that's what we did. We weren't perfect, you know. I mean, you don't criticise someone for being dirty when they're in the shower, if you know what I mean. Oh, he's got a spot of dirt on him. Yeah, but he's going to wash it off. So we were following a purifying process. And in the main, everything was really nice, you know. I mean, I'm not saying you didn't get dev devotees having disagreements sometimes and some nonsense going on here and there. But in the main, it was really, really nice, you know. And uh, if you ask me now, would I go and live in a community? Well, not not if it wasn't devotees, I wouldn't, no. I'd, I really wouldn't want to do that. But um, <clears throat> that was fantastic. Um, Can we talk, I mean, um, if you've got more to say, fantastic. But at some point, I'm really keen to talk about, I guess, the events around you leaving Chaitanya College. Yeah, 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 uh, we'll get to that. Well, one thing I have to mention, because it was an important... Yeah, one yeah. <laughs> I, I, as well as those other services I've mentioned, <clears throat> I um, became part of what was known as CHIT, C-I-T, Chaitanya's Instant Theatre. And I used to uh, be involved in the dramas with Sri Patti and Boomadev. And nice, nice. Namish Aranya. And... Uh, <clears throat> When I had joined the, the manor in 1978, I brought my guitar with me, you know, an acoustic guitar, which uh, which Vipramukhiya put in a cupboard and I wasn't allowed to touch it, you know. And in fact, I never touched a guitar for years. But when I was in Chit, somehow or other, after some years, I was again allowed to play guitar and I was playing... There were some public venues, you know, where we'd go and, and do preaching and use guitar to chant Hare Krishna and things like that. And I had so many guitars at my disposal. And I can remember having one and I was sitting there in the gardener's cottage with this guitar and I felt this irresistible urge, you know, because I should have just played Hare Krishna, right? But I had this irresistible urge to play Beatles songs. So I thought... Well, we can't be having this. So I made up some lyrics. So instead of singing Michelle, my bell, these are words that go together well. I was singing Hare Krishna. These are words that go to together well. And I converted several Beatles songs into transcendental songs. And uh, <clears throat> there was like Get Back. So that was a good one about Jiva was a soul who thought he was the body fell down into the material world, get back to where you once belong. And so I went to the uh, theatre group and told them what I'd done. I got this idea. Uh, I've been writing all these Beatles uh, lyrics for Beatles songs, and I played some. But another one was like Krishna in the sky with Radha, you know, not Lucy in the skies with diamonds. But uh, so they liked the idea. And so one year Christmas review, we did a whole series of, uh, of Beatles songs. We pre-recorded them in a recording studio at the Manor, I think it was. I think it was mostly at the Manor. <clears throat> With Mohan, I don't know if you uh, ever came across Mohan, but he was in charge of videos. and So we recorded them. We had uh, the wonderful Vichit Treveria uh, singing some of the songs with his beautiful voice. And... Our backing, our backing that we played was quite authentic, quite close to the, the original Beatles songs. So we did this performance and uh, the devotees absolutely loved it. You know, I think they were a bit starved of entertainment, actually. But um, so this Christmas review, we did that and it was very successful and uh, I loved it. But um, it's what you might call dovetailing. But um, apparently, years later, uh, Bhagavan was not impressed with that. And he made the uh, devotees like Sri Pati apologize, uh, do a public apology for our disgraceful behavior. But, you know, um, so he thought it was Maya, uh, but we didn't. You know, we thought it was transcendental. And we had a lot to thank the Beatles for in a way, in bringing us to Krishna consciousness, actually. They did their bit, especially George Harrison. 
so uh, we won't have changed. So anyway, uh, we, we were called, uh, the not the Beatles, we called ourselves the Lotus Fetals. So, um, so apart from that, I mean, you know, Chaitanya College was just like the manor, same program, same activities going on, Sunday feasts every Sunday, mm. and uh, uh, a lot of devotees going out on traveling Sankatan coming back every so often for, for uh, festivals and that. And how so, many, uh, certainly when you were there, how many people, how many devotees were living there uh, in the grounds? I can't remember. I'd, I'd be speculating. It might have been hundreds, you know. Um, <clears> There's <throat> a lot. The Jai Theatre had, I thought, uh, 400 disciples around mm. about. I was his disciple, and... I, I had never thought I want to get initiated, but you were told it's time to get initiated, and he was the one. Mm. That was his zone. But I always liked him, and I always found he was very a lot more mellow than some of the others. You know, some of them were quite fierce. I thought, you know, um, so I was very glad to have him as uh, my guru. And as I've told you, I was completely happy living there and I had my service and then um, now I'll move on to why did we leave so then Jai Tirta started uh, having these ecstatic symptoms so called and I can remember once um, at Chaitanya College he was sitting there and went on for like 45 minutes or more just wailing and screaming you know he started off by doing kirtan but it just became a wailing and crying and and uh, some call that ecstatic symptoms um some think it was drug induced or you know lsd induced and i can remember at that time i couldn't handle it and i went down from there i went out the room and went down to the treasury and i had a chat with a Prabhupada disciple telling him i just can't get my head around this what's going on you know so there was some strange stuff going on. And of course, after a while, um, the GBC forced Jai Tirta to take Sanyas. Well, I think that's what it is. I wasn't there, but this is the story. And that wasn't good for his wife and son, actually. That was very heartbreaking for them. And uh, then later on, but they tolerated that. You know, they told him he had to stop all this nonsense, the, the drugs, you know, the, the GBC. They knew what he was doing. And they had told him to stop. But it didn't bother them so much as when Jai Tirta went to uh, Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj in Navadweep and took shelter of him. And, you know, Sridhar Maharaj was aware of the things Jai Tirta was doing and wanted him to stop, and Jai Tirta said he would stop, you know? And <clears throat> that is what the GBC couldn't tolerate, that Jai Tirta had taken shelter of Sridhar Maharaj, and they gave him, I think it was at the time that every year during Gorpanin, the devotees would go to Mayapur, and it was there that they gave Jai Tirta an ultimatum, you know, either it's Sridhar Maharaj or Iskon, you know? If you want to be with him, you must leave. So that's what he did. He left and he went to uh, Sridhar Maharaj's mat. So, you know, we knew there was some weird stuff going on with Jai Tirta. We weren't sure what it was all about. Was it ecstatic symptoms? Um, but he went to Sridhar Maharaj and then one day devotees said, oh, um, we're going to India. We're all going to India to, to, to see Jai Tirta and we're leaving ISKCON, you know? And I thought, I can't just do that. I, I've got to wake the deities tomorrow, you know? Who's going to wake the deities in the morning? Who's going to teach the children uh, in the Guru call tomorrow, you know? And all of this and, you know, all my services. I just didn't want to cut them loose. But anyway, it happened. And we ended up with a whole load of Jai Tirta disciples uh, went to this house. It was a house that Jai Tirta used in Alderman. 
quite a nice house. And we ended up in there. And uh, we were like, it was awful um, because uh, we were like barricaded in, in a way. And the Prabhupada disciples were coming to get us to come back to the manor. And it was horrible because, you know, it's not as though I was just one of the Jayatirti disciples, but I was also a close friend of many uh, Prabhupada disciples as well. And it broke my heart for this sort of, it was it was it was heavy duty stuff going on. I mean, there was no physical violence or anything, but it was weird because we were going off to do something, and they were trying to stop us. But then we went to India, and I think Jayatirtha had actually asked us not to do that. They they sent a video with Jayatirtha telling us, "Don't cut and leave," you know. But we ignored it. We said, oh, that's, this is a fabricated video or something. They were saying. And I can remember at the time being barricaded in this Oldenham house. And the one devotee that was sort of uh, like leading everybody was Navinita Chora. And he, um, he was such a sweet devotee. That's how I remember him, Sankitan devotee. So, uh, sweet loving devotee but you know he was very faithful to Jayatirtha but by the time we were doing this thing in Aldenham house getting ready to go to India with everybody else trying to stop us um in my view it seemed like he'd gone mad you know he was saying some very strange things and, and behaving very strangely so um you know like I remember once we were in a, in a room and he was telling us about Shruta Maharaj and Jayatita. And then he did a cartwheel across the room, you know. Um, we thought, this is completely weird. What's wrong with him? He was <laughs> telling us that the deities at Soho Street, he refused to take Prasadam, uh, Maha Prasad, because the deities had actually left the altar. So completely ridiculous ideas. Because... You know, because Jayatirtha had left his gone, and uh, there was some rift between Jayatirtha and his uh, other acharyas. So um, I didn't want to go to India, but I did. You know, I was persuaded. I can remember devoted when we'd left Kroom Court, there were devotees trying to stop us leaving, like this cancer hunter who had done all that painting work I mm. mentioned. He lay down on, on the road in front of our transit van to stop us leaving. Of course, we just drove around him, you know. But um, that was this really weird uh, time, you know. And then we went to India uh, with the one-way tickets. We all had one-way tickets. Um, we just relied on Krishna. So it's a matter, I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, and then hundreds of us just flew out from England, arrived in Navadwi. And I think it was a huge surprise to Sridhar Maharaj and all his disciples that lived it there, um, that all these people suddenly turn up, you know, uh, followers of Jayatitta. Um, but they were very kind to us, you know. I can remember my first night lying on, the, on a veranda, you know, being bitten to death by mosquitoes, actually, uh, you know. I didn't really notice the mosquitoes, but I noticed all the bites in the morning because it was just like lying on a veranda in a sleeping bag. So <clears throat> it's very strange. And, you know, it was only sometime afterwards that I actually realised that what they were saying about Jaita to um, taking LSD and and all of that, that it was actually true. Because to begin with, I wouldn't believe it, you know. We were so well taught to uh, have faith in Guru and uh, not to listen to any blasphemy, you know, any criticism. But it was true. And, you know, Jayateta, I could not follow it, follow him in what he was doing, you know. Because, you know, basically uh, introducing drugs into the process 
which was not what Prabhupada taught us to do. He told us to give up these things, you know. But nevertheless, I had no animosity towards Jayateta, you know. I liked him very much, and then that never stopped. And in fact, Jayateta actually encouraged us uh, to take shelter of uh, Sridhar Maharaj. So I didn't do it straight away, but a year or two later, I took initiation uh, oh. from Sridhar Maharaj. When Jai Tirtha was doing that, encouraging you, to, encouraging you to take shelter of Shida Maharaj, what was the what was the kind of context? And at that point, he he had been kicked out of Iskon or he'd left Iskon. Was he a sannyasi? Wasn't he a sannyasi? And it was, was still he... sannyasi. He was still living. He was living in Shida Maharaj's mat for a while, but... and that's when we first went there. He was there, hmm. and actually, in retrospect, I can see there were some other devotees with him. And they were like smoking ganja with him. We we didn't know, you know. And Sridhar Maharaj didn't know either, because Sridhar Maharaj doesn't didn't advocate such things at all. It's it's just like you know, drugs and and all this. Mm. It may give you some uh, awakening, but it's all on the mental platform. Mm. Ultimately, it leads to no good. But um, it's not spiritual, you know. But but was was Jai Tirtha encouraging his disciples to take shelter of Shidamars because he felt that he wasn't good enough? He felt that he was about no, to move it, on. I mean, it wasn't he was like that. No, um, no, he maintained his position. Okay, you know, and I think in a sense he was deceiving Shida Shidamaraj. You know, they were secretly smoking stuff. And there was a couple of devotees who later uh, was uh, with Jayateta who were doing that with him. Um, but, you know, I mean, these things, sometimes, you know, people smoke dope secretly. They don't let their parents know they're doing it, you know. Uh, so it was, a, it was sort of a bit like that. And they thought that this, I don't know if this was just, they knew it was nonsense. Or whether they actually believe that doing such things would help them in their spiritual lives. Mm. I really don't know. But it's very much like for many of them is going back to what you were doing before you joined the temple. The same with Jai Tirtha, I think he used to do that. But having said all of that, Jai Tirtha, um, you, you, you can you, uh, search his name in Prabhupada's Vader base. I did that once, uh, the PC version. And there's so many references to him. And you can't believe the amount of good work he did for Prabhupada, running Spiritual Sky, uh, you know, meeting with, with important famous people. He did so much, you know, he did this Archana Paditi book about deity worship. He did so much fantastic service and Shuddha Prabhupada pre really appreciated that. So we have to see always, if a devotee deviates from the path or falls down, it's 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 a temporary thing, and even though we know that Jayatirtha didn't come to a good end, so I don't even really want to talk about that. But mm. one day we heard um, that he'd been murdered by his disciple Navanita Chora, and um, so just was, sorry, the name you've just mentioned. This was the devotee that at the house in Alden was yeah. encouraging yeah. you all to stay at the yeah. house. Yeah. Okay. So he'd spent years, because this business went on for years. I don't know the details of what went on with his followers. I still know people who still follow Jaitirta today. And I have affection for them because they were my friends. And, and they, you know, it's not all good. It's not all bad. You know, these people are, you know, to a certain extent, have some sincerity. It's just that they were doing all that and they got involved in this phantasmagoria, you know. But, um, you know, after some years, I think they just drifted further and further into what I might call fantasy land, you know. I mean, I took LSD myself as a teenager, you know, and I know what it's like. And I know it shows you how amazing the world is and it shows you lots of things and it makes you see Things are not what they seem. It's all in the mind. And also, you know, there's illusion. There's a, you know, because I knew that what I was seeing on acid was all in illusion. So, and even once I was looking at this wonderful thing, 
I thought was an amazing thing and it just happened to be my own leg and I didn't know and I was observing this thing like it wasn't me it was something else so even you might even get a feeling that you're not the body you know mm. that you're so yes it awakens you but of course to have real spiritual development you need to go beyond that that might give you an awakening and you don't need to do it to become Krishna conscious for sure you know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't doing that mm. for all his followers you know you don't need it but some people have done that and it's opened their eyes and they, they followed it but anyway uh they drifted off and whatever happened to Navanita Chor, I don't know why he murdered him I don't know but there was a lot of problems going on and was, actually, was he sorry was he like punished after did he go to prison or that type of thing yeah he went to prison yeah of course for murder I don't think it was difficult to find him you know? yeah um and uh so two weeks before he was murdered one devotee said oh Jai Tirta's come over to England and if you want you can come and see him so I did I went to this devotee's house what a Jai Tirta follower and I spent a bit of time talking to Jai Tirta who at the time he wasn't wearing uh, sannyasi robes or anything. He was just dressed with jeans and a checked shirt. And he was very, you know, he said he's keeping a low profile. He doesn't want everybody to know he's around, you know. But I had a chat with him and he's very sweet, actually. Very nice, gentle person, you know. So despite all the bizarre activities that may or may not have gone on, that meeting I had with him um, was was nice. And I said to him, you know, I've taken initiation from Sridhar Maharaj now because I couldn't follow you doing all this stuff. And he said, that's fine. Sridhar Shrida Maharaj is a wonderful devotee and you've done the right thing. So that was good. Um, and then two weeks later, he was, um, you know, he was killed. And then... Um, I, I actually took his ashes to, to the Ganga in Navadweep. So I approached Manjuali and told her, if she wants, I'll do that. I happily take his ashes to India and put them in the Ganges. And, uh, and I did, you know, because she was very pleased that, uh, that I offered to do that, you know, paid for my own flight and everything. But it was the least I could do for him, you know. And... Uh, I think perhaps he would be happy, you know, to be put to his for his ashes, not his soul. His soul, we don't know where that went, um, him, where he actually went, the spiritual being, but took his ashes to, to the uh, Ganges. And I, I turned up to the temple in Navadweep and was met at the gates by a devotee who said, you can't bring those. I told him what I'd come to do. He said, you can't bring them into the temple grounds. So we went straight to the Ganges and uh, put his ashes there. And, you know, I, I, I don't think that Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj was told what had happened to him because he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't be able to bear the grief of it, you know? So I think he might have been told he'd passed away, but he wasn't told how. And uh, actually, it, it's not a good one, but... Uh, I've got uh, a picture here, but it's a terrible quality picture, but, um, oh. Um, oh, wow, look at these photos. So this one is me, that's me, at, sitting at the feet of Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj. Wow. This is, this is the time I had gone to India to put Jayatirta's ashes in the Ganga. So I think what I had done is uh, put his ashes in the Ganges and then uh, came to, to have darshan of, of Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj. And did you tell Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj that you were, why you were in India? That you no. Were putting... no. Okay. No. I don't think so, no. Of course, this was 1982 uh no, this this was later I mean, was eight, okay 83 was, maybe 83 
can't remember the exact year. I think it was even after that. It was after 1985. Wow. We can research that. You can find out exactly what year. It might have been 1987. I can't remember. And that wasn't too long before Sri Srinivas departed from this world as well. But um, yeah. So anyway, that's enough. I mean, that was kind of my train of thought. I thought that Jai Tirtha left the world in '82. I could be wrong. Very wrong. No, no, he didn't. He left Iskon in '82. Okay, it was not, okay. Not not. Uh, not the world. <laughs> and 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 Shridhar Maharaj left in 88, 87? I think so, yeah. And and it, I'm just, I don't know. I mean, the, the Hare Krishna movement, like any other group of people, a well, lot of people... What did Shridhar Maharaj leave the planet? 12th of August, 1988. Um, but you took Jai Tirtha's ashes January 88. Right. But he had passed so, away in so, 87. We did mention before that Kundalata is not to come and interrupt this. And, uh, oh, it's great. She, she, start everyone, putting me right. But anyway. The whole world can see who your wife is, but I know who your wife is. <laughs> I'm just no, yeah. I'm just looking up Jai Tirtha on. So it was 1988. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm looking now on Wikipedia. I, I'm completely wrong about something. Jai Tirtha left the world in on November the 13th, 1987. Yeah. Did you know it was Friday the 13th? Wow. I think it was and his that, birthday. That might have been around the time of Prabhupada's disappearance day, which often falls in November. But I think it was because it, I think it was Jaitita's birthday as well. But you can check that as well. Oh, my goodness. It I've just it was. November so it's the, sinister. Uh, November, so November the 13th, 1948 to November the 13th, November the 13th, 1987. That's kind of the numerologists will be loving that people that study numbers and the kind of meanings. Yeah, yeah, would yeah. Be... But, you know, um, it was a weird time, you know, and I wasn't part of it. So I don't know all the details of what went on. But from the years from 1982 up until the time of his, his death, it's like six years, you know, and a lot went on and things got more and more bizarre apparently, that I can't comment. Yeah. All I know is that I have regard for him and I would not be dis disrespectful to him and that he was an important uh, Prabhupada disciple and true to Prabhupada loved him. He did lots of good service. And I would like to think that, you know, yes, it was like big, whatever you would call it, that he got, but you know, he's an eternal spirit soul and has moved on and his Krishna consciousness will doubtlessly continue, you know. And, you know, he may have taken birth again now, by now. I would have thought so. And you mm. never know, you know. So it's best to, to have positive feelings towards devotees. Uh, we can all make big mistakes and get led astray, mm. you know. Mm. We shouldn't think otherwise, because that's when, you know, pride comes before a fall, you know. Mm. Um, so, but on a very positive note, he, it was because of Jayatirtha, we really got close to Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj. And one of your questions was like, what is it like to be in his association? Well, I've never met a Vaishnava of that quality in my whole life. Because you have to remember, Srila Prabhupada had left the planet before I joined ISKCON. So I never met Srila Prabhupada. And I'm sure I would feel, I've seen the videos of Srila Prabhupada, read his books. He's truly wonderful. But I would say Srila Srila Maharaj is the same caliber of devotee, and that is totally pure devotee. Mm, mm. He, he passed away in his 90s. And he had a, many decades of being a devotee, disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta, never, ever deviated from the path, fell down or anything. So very pure soul. But yet he was full of humility. I can remember the old, old days, you know, he would be sitting talking and then someone would join. Then Guru Maharaj, Trudor Maharaj would say, who's, it, who's this? Because was, his sight wasn't good. And uh, like when I first went there, he said, who's this? And they said, oh, 
this is Talavan, because that was the, the name I'd been given by Jayateya to Talavan. Some devotees still call me by that name. And I Tal don't Taliban. Tal not Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. It but sounds like Tal Taliban, but Taliban. Talavan, I think. Talavan. I've never heard Talavan. that name ever. I've never heard anyone else have that name well, ever. Tala is a fruit <laughs> and Van is a forest. So it's a forest of fruit trees. And I think it might have been there's some forest where Krishna had a pastime killing a demon. I think it might have been Denikasura or somebody like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bala, I think it was Balaram. Anyway, so uh, he said, who is this? And uh, he said, this is Taliban. And so Guru Maharaj started talking about the Taliban forest and Krishna's pastimes. And it was so sweet. And he was so welcoming that he would, everybody that would come, he would acknowledge them and make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And he was very humble. So whenever you uh, gave him some respect, he would do this, you know. Passing it on up to his guru, whatever praise you gave him, he'd say, this is all to be passed up to my Guru Maharaj and, and Krishna. And he lived in a very humble surrounding. He had a, uh, the room he lived in, very basic, with curtains made from uh, sack. And, and when they wanted to him to go have cataract operation, he didn't want it. You know, he was just happy as he was, you know, very, very simple. Uh, very approachable. He wasn't surrounded by an entourage of people not letting you get to talk to him. It's a very poetic and a deep presentation of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And, you know, he preached Gaudiya Vaishnavism and he practiced it. He practiced what he preached. He was truly an, a, 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 an Acharya. And a different mood from Srila Prabhupada because Srila Maharaj, in a sense, people came to him to listen to him. Although he had done preaching in the past with Srila Prabhupada, actually. Um, but um, he was a very loving god brother of Srila Prabhupada. So they spent many years of close association before Srila Prabhupada came to the West. You may have heard, I don't know, but he used to live in Srila Prabhupada's, uh, Srila Prabhupada had a chemi chem mm. chemistry, a, chem a, a, chemi pharm a pharmacy. Yeah, yeah. And Srila Shri Maharaj was renting the rooms above there. Mm. And then we go on preaching programs together. Mm. Um, with, along with Keshava Maharaj, who, who is Narayan Maharaj, is uh, so, and and of course uh, Govinda Maharaj, who was uh, uh, you know uh, Guru Maharaj's uh, disciple, who is his successor, was the first person to distribute the Back to Godhead magazine. So Shuddha Prabhupada was making Back to Godheads in India long before he came to the West. And apart from Srila Prabhupada, because obviously Srila Prabhupada distributed back, he was the first one to distribute his back to Godhead. Mm, mm, mm. Govinda Maharaj was doing that also and helping him. Mm. And uh, very close. And I have to say, in the early days, we were accused, because we'd gone to Srila Maharaj, we were accused of uh, turning our backs uh, on Srila Prabhupada. But this is nothing further from the truth, because actually our respect and love for Srila Prabhupada has only grown since that time. It's not turn our back. It's not like that. They're <clears throat> part of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur's tree. So, you know, it's not just one line of Diksha Gurus. And uh, there's only one guru at the moment, but there's a whole tree. Each guru has several disciples. Some of them go by the wayside, you know, but mostly it's a thriving tree. And even if people think that the Goldia Math has disappeared, it hasn't. It's got many branches uh, where uh, uh, disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur have in India established a thriving uh, 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 succession you know with with mats and 
you can go visit them. Mm -hmm. You'll see mm -hmm. them if you go to Mayapur. Um, so it's all very wonderful. And and Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj had only good things to say about Sridhar Prabhupada. And we we have we have a website called uh, Sridhar Vani, and we've got in excess of 900 audio tapes recordings online of Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj and and he is often talking about Sridhar Prabhupada with in such a loving way. And also on some of these recordings, you'll hear, certainly in 1981, maybe 82, that the leading members of the GBC from ISKCON, so this was before we went to Navadweep, actually, they didn't know about it, but Bhavananda, Jayapataka Swami, um, Ramashwar, um, Hansadutta, they're all going uh, to ask questions of, of Guru Maharaj and all being very respectful to him as well. But anyway, um, the, the thing but, is, I mean, it's it, it, Prabhupada said Prabhupada before he left the world, left the planet. He's told his disciples that you can go and take a, for philosophical advice. You can go to Shuddha Shuddha Maharaj. Yes. He, he authorized that. He sanctioned that. They did. Uh, so, um, of course, I found that out through my own study and research. Uh, despite 20 years in ISKCON, you're not actually told that. <laughs> uh, you have to find it out for yourself. Yes. Well, they were going to visit Guru Maharaj, <clears throat> but they weren't telling us about it. So they go and talk to him, ask him questions and come back and they'd be preaching stuff. Mm, mm. But they didn't tell us where they got it from, you know. So I didn't know anything about it, you know. Of course, later on, uh, Shuddha Maharaj became, they became, uh, they didn't favor him after a while. So there's various things, but always he, they thought he might be wanting to take over Iskon or something, which is a lot of nonsense. Um, he wasn't interested in that. He just wanted to be a friend and help, you know? Um, my, under he, my understanding, actually, when Prabhupada was on the planet, he, he even asked Shuddha Shira Maharaj to to become the president of ISKCON, I believe. Mayor. And, well, uh, and Shira Maharaj declined and said he, he didn't want to be the president of ISKCON. No. No, <laughs> Shira Maharaj wasn't much interested in men and money, you know? Mm, mm. He didn't want power like that. He was just happy to do to quietly do his badjan. Um, <clears throat> but he was more of the, the kind of person you come to ask questions of. And he, you know, all these, from his recordings, all these books. Mm. So he preached in that way. Kind of like, kind of like the oracle. Let's go to the, the, the elderly gentleman, the statesman-like yeah. figure the, for advice, like a grandfather and uncle. Go to him for advice. Yeah. He, can, he can guide us, the guide, yes. you know. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And he's very poetic as well. Mm. And uh, whereas Shruta Prabhupada was a very fierce preacher, I would say he's like uh, Sridhar Prabhupada, like a first-class salesman, you know, the way he could go out and preach and convert people. He was very, very forceful. I, I don't mean he wasn't aggressive, but his message was very strong. And Sridhar Prabhupada simplified things as well to make it clear to, to people that this was, you know, all you need to do is chant, dance and be happy you know that kind of message and it worked you know um but anyway um let me just show you some more photos yes please do on the topic of shudama so i think this is when the iskon temple there was some opening ceremony um mm. In, Vrind picture, in Vrindavan, or, or it's not Vrindavan, in Mayapur. In, in Mayapur, Mayapur yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I think it might have been the opening of the uh, of the temple in Mayapur. 73. I think that was, or was it 72? Yeah, but it was that kind of time. Mm. And he invited Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj. So here is the Sridhar Sridhar Maharaj, and there is Govinda Maharaj. Mm. Mm. And and also there, but you can't see in this picture, was Krishnadas Babaji. So Guru Maharaj and Krishnadas Babaji, and I think Bhaktinandan Swami, 
as well, who was a child at the time. Mm. And Govinda Maharaj accompanied Guru Maharaj. And Prabhupada had invited them to the opening ceremony. Uh, but they there was only one Vyasasam. They'd only provided one Vyasasam. They didn't understand, I don't think, although Prabhupada's disciples may not have understood the importance of Sri Sridhar So Prabhupada insisted that Sri Sridhar Maharaj share the Vyasa <clears throat> mm. So there you can see them together, mm. you know, two God brothers sharing a Vyasa sand. This has to be a testament to the uh, mutual respect that they had for each other, you know. Um, so there was that. And uh, Sri Sridhar Maharaj, he got Govinda Maharaj to give the talk. So that's why Govinda Maharaj has the microphone, because uh, he's giving a, a talk about something. So there's that picture. Um, so I don't know what year this is, but uh, well, here's a picture of Srila Prabhupada at uh, Sri Taichanya Sarasvat Mat. And there's Govinda Maharaj. Um, so there's that. Did one. you take this photo? It's one of your original photos. No, 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 no. This is just one I've come across. Because I've not seen this one before. I've seen some of the others, but I've never seen this photo before. Okay. Um, and then this one you might have seen. Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen versions of this one. <laughs> this is again there's Srila Srila Maharaj with Srila Prabhupada. This is Jai Pataka Swami. Mm. This is Bhavananda Swami. And I think this is Prajumna. I'm not sure, but I think it is. You know, Prajumna was a, a big uh, Sanskrit scholar, disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Mm. So um, Srila Prabhupada would sometimes leave his disciples uh, at the mat. Uh, one in particular was um, Achyutananda Swami, who who did the that songbook, you know, songs of the Vaishnava Charyas. <clears throat> and with the help of Gumaraj, he would travel around the area, learning how to play the Murdunga and how, learning the tunes for the different bhajans. So once he'd done that, they made this uh, songs of the Vaishnava Charyas. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's, a, there's a sannyasi next to Shira Maharaj with glasses on. Do you know who that is? No, not the, no. Oh, that's I think Swarup, uh, Swarup Maharaj there, yeah, behind, that's true. yeah, yeah. But there's yeah. A, the, the one with the, the sannyasi with glasses. No, he, I'm he, not he, sure who he is, but he looks like one of not not Prabhupada's disciple, but yeah, he looks a bit older, a bit too old at that yeah. point to be a Prabhupada disciple, but maybe he was a younger god brother of uh. Shri Maharaj and Prabhupada. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so there's that one. Much similar, just them two together. Mm. But, uh, you know, when Shri Prabhupada came to India, he would go and visit Shri Shri Maharaj. So they had a good relationship. Um so yeah, I mean that's all the photos I've got. Uh, Thank you. I, I loved the photos. Just just to kind of really show us, particularly the photos that are yours and that you know one else. Well, certainly I've never seen before. Yeah. Um, well, it's certainly better than looking at my silly face. And you used to have jet. You used to have jet black hair by the looks of it. Your photo when you were sitting on the floor next to Shira Maharaj, you had jet yes. black hair. I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I just want just wonderful. Yeah, I just loved that. What you kind of you you know being around Sridhar Maharaj, and um, I, I certainly the, the when I've spent time with his disciples and his grand disciples, I've kind of got that feeling as well. Of when I say of simplicity, I don't mean simpleness. I mean that kind of just simple well, austerity, that kind of basic Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's just a different vibe from Prabhupada's disciples. It's not a, a good thing or a bad well, thing. It's just different. In, in in sometimes in ISKCON, um, and of course, I think Srila Prabhupada said, when you're doing deity worship, mm. you know, even though it's Radha Krishna deities, you're actually, this is Lakshmi Narayan worship, mm. because mm. it's 
it's got uh, opulence, awe and reverence, you know. You don't like uh, the close, intimate associates of Krishna had no, I, no concept of awe and reverence. They didn't know he was God. Radharani would be telling him off, you know. His uh, coward boyfriends would be slapping him on the back and playing tricks on him. You know, really intimate, close, loving relationship. Mm, mm. But with, with uh, Narayan and even Krishna in Dwarka and Mathura, all his associates have a certain amount of reverence, even the queens, you know, hold, they know he's God and they hold him in, in high regard. So um, the deity worship in ISKCON is very opulent and it's wonderful to go to an ISKCON temple and see how beautiful they dress the deities and, and worship Krishna. Um, but I always got the feeling in ISKCON there is that majesty and awe and reverence and everything beautifully uh, decorated Whereas in Navadweep and in, in, in Sridhar Sridhamaraj's mat, it, it was very much simpler, very much more uh, Vrindavan style. So, you know, um, that close, focusing on, on those more intra, intimate, because Krishna also in Vrindavan was living a very simple life as a cowherd boy. He wasn't like Krishna in Dwarka, who was like a prince or a king, you know? But Krishna was just like a little cowherd boy um, engaged in simple living. And, and so the, some of the Gaudiya Mat temples have that mood, especially Sridhama. Mm. It's got that mood. So you might go in and say, oh, there's dust on the altar or something. You know, what's this? But actually, there's love and devotion. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. And of course, in Iskon, you've got all of that. Of course you have, you know, Sridhar Prabhupada. Was taught, there were times when I thought I'm learning something new, you know, but actually, whatever I have learned since um, uh, taking shelter of Shruta Raj, it's all in Shruta Prabhupada's books, mm. all of it, everything. And just because you hadn't read them at that time, you know, and read everything in Shruta Prabhupada's books didn't mean that he hadn't said it, you know. And, and so it's all there, but the presentation is very different. So Shri Shri Maharaj is sort of very gentle mm. um, revelation of deep philosophical truths. Um, but uh, Shri Shri Maharaj is very cautious not to talk about topics that are too high. So there was once on, on one audio tape I was listening to, and the devotees, the Prabhupada disciples, uh, GBC people, were asking Sridhar Maharaj about um, the the uh, the Brahma Samhita, and um, there's one verse where it explains Krishna's abode is hexagonal, and um, anyway they started to they wanted to hit him to explain that to them, and he says uh, no, he refuses to talk to them about that, <laughs> and that was it. He wouldn't talk about it. He says these things are too high. You know, and he always talk about things like, um, you know, always we respect from a distance and we take shelter of the servants of Krishna, um, that we don't want to go peeping into Krishna's bedroom. We don't know, want to know about those, you know, uh, of that side of things, you know, always above my head, you know. Um, he talks about, you can't serve Krishna directly. This is an arrogant attitude to think that you personally can directly serve Krishna. But no, we are the servant of the servant of the servant. So if your thing is Madhurya Ras, you take shelter of Radharani. You take shelter of, of the chief devotees and the different Rasas. If you're uh, Vatsalya Ras, you take shelter of Mother Yashoda. You know, but always recognize there is some devotee. Mm -hmm. And all, like Uddhava said, he really respected the gopis, but he just wanted to take birth in Vrindavan as a blade of grass or a shrub and have the lotus dust of, uh, of the gopis on, on, on his head. So that we always take the humble position. And uh, so Sridhar is very gentle. But um, 
But he, he taught the same things as Srila Prabhupada did, but Srila Prabhupada's presentation was different as well, more forceful, you know, and humorous. You know, Srila Prabhupada was very humorous as well, I thought. Um, like, um, I remember once some lady from an audience asked Srila Prabhupada, have you seen God? And Srila Prabhupada said, have you not? And he started talking about Krishna's everywhere. How can you not see Krishna? Uh, I, he didn't answer the question directly. Mm. That, that's the way he talked. But, um, I have it, um, just, I, I think, maybe one final question I've got for you, which wasn't on the list of questions I sent to you, but I'm kind of keen to know the answer. I've just kind of um, realized it's it's 40 years since some of these things happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, since I don't like the term leftist gone or leavist gone because that means different things to different people. But it's around 40 years since you you took shelter of Shuddha Shuddha Maharaj and, you know, you kind of left Chaitanya College and took uh, initiation from Shuddha yeah. Maharaj. And obviously things were probably quite difficult as well at the time with many of many other devotees. What, what are things like now for you 40 years later in the devotee community? I mean, well, they're wonderful. I mean, um, <laughs> for a while, a short while. Some years that if we were to go to an ISKCON temple, then we would just have to listen to offensive comments about Srila Sridhar Maharaj. So we didn't go. We didn't want to hear that. But that's all changed. And uh, for decades now, I've been going to ISKCON temples. Um, do you know Shekshi Gopal? Mm. So he, I remember once he asked me, why don't I come along? to the George evening, the George Harrison evening, which they have a, a little get together in 9-11 uh, in they call it, or 29-11, the 29th of November, mm. which is uh, George Harrison's disappearance day, mm. and I bring your guitar and sing some George Harrison songs. So I've done that a lot. These were going regularly. And uh, now um, I go to the manor quite a lot. And uh, when I go there, for me, I'm transported back to the days when I lived there. So for me, it's the same. It's my home. Mm, then mm. if you get the thing, if you ever go and visit your parents' house, visit your parents and their house, if they're still uh, with you, um, then you feel this is my home and you feel so comfortable there. So when I go to the manor, that's how I feel. The devotees are very nice. I love the devotees, you know, and uh, so I go to the manor quite a lot at various events. And also I go to the, there's a local uh, gathering in Brighton once a week. Of, it's an ISKCON thing, mm. um, uh, Hare Krishna evening and de uh, initiated devotees go and also people that are new. And we have Kirtan a class, prasad, and that's great. So now I truly feel, uh, well, like what I've written down here, actually, I don't see ISKCON and the Goldia Mat as separate, but both are part of Bhaktisiddhanta's tree. So mm. it's all part of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's and uh, Lord Chaitanya's uh, Krishna consciousness movement. And... Uh, were following, interestingly enough, I've got this set of uh, eight volume book uh, of The Harmonist, you know, um, which is the magazine that uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Tackle published. So you've got articles in that going way back to 1927. And as I read through it, it's not really amazing, but anyway, you read it and the philosophy in those that harmonist is exactly the same as what we're being taught today because they have passed down the knowledge mm. without alteration mm. should the Prabhupada sort of that with his books you know um so yeah i i just love to meet devotees that are, are followers of mahaprabhu whatever the temple mm. we have to see beyond that right and mm. uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, in this day and age, a lot of ISKCON devotees don't know anything about this, this past. 
Mm. So they haven't got any baggage uh, in, in relation to that. So, you know, very different, you know. But, you know, like Sakshi Gopal, I, I really respect him and uh, a good friend of mine, you know, and others, you know. So um, Paravida, you must know Paravida, no? He's. <laughs> I know him. I know him. He he's uh, a. He, he, yes, yes. He's he's Dutch, right? He's Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so I've met him a few times. Famous for some, and 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 many others. You know, keep bumping into devotees. Um, uh, what's he called? Krishna Gopal. Is it Krishna Gopal? He he does weddings. Jacob um, Jacobal. Jacobal? No. Uh, Krishna Gopal, I think his name, or Gopal Krishna. Um, oh, Kundalata will put me right on this. Anyway, uh, my daughter, uh, oh, Jai Krishna. Jai Krishna, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Jai Krishna Prabhu. I mentioned <laughs> I used to be at the uh, Chaitanya's Instant Theatre, and we used to do the Ramayan, and I used to do the part of Dasarath. Mm. Jai Krishna and his friend or brother, they used to come and be monkeys because they were like little children at the time. And they were such fantastic guys, these little kids. And uh, so now Jai Krishna now runs the the drama group mm -hmm. at the manor in, in Iskon. And uh, we remember each other well, but he does marriages. And he married my daughter. No, he didn't marry my daughter, but he did. He was the priest at my daughter's wedding, which we had in our garden. So our garden's quite big, and it was big enough to have a wedding outdoors by sacrifice and everything. And it was, it was absolutely wonderful. So uh, why I'm telling you this, I, I've lost the plot. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but no, I'm. It's just talking about my relationship yes. with this um, um, Puru, um, Ananta Purushottam. You know him? Mm. Oh yes, he, very well. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Him, you know, I see quite fairly often, and his daughter sometimes come across. Mm. In, uh, it's great. It's great that you have those kind of positive experiences, and I think that. I'd like to think that people, particularly within ISKCON, have kind of moved on from the 1980s. I mean, and you're absolutely right. I mean, those of us that are newer to the movement, we don't have that baggage. You know, I, I was I was born in the year 1984. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, it was all, so all over and done with by then. <laughs> exactly. And I, I wasn't aware of any of it until a couple of years ago when I started reading and doing my own research. So and a lot of devotees under the age of 45 won't have a clue about any of these things unless they're at, unless they ask or they're they're told about them or read and about them. They don't them. need to know about it either. I mean, it's, yeah, it's history. It's mm. it's details that we don't need to know. What we need to know is what what's in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Charitamrita and all the other scriptures that we have mm. Mm. in Gaudiya Vaishnavas and the enlivening stuff. That's the exciting we're... spiritual transcendental stuff. Um, yes, the loving stuff, all about cleaning our hearts and developing mm. frame of acting. Not all That's the politics. We mm. <laughs> well, believe it or not, Trilokanath Prabhu, we've been chatting for two hours. Oh, wow. Well, which I'm is... sorry about No, that. don't apologize. It's been wonderful to hear everything you've had to say. And, and you, you really went into quite a bit of detail there about certain issues that I was just delighted to hear about. And you've told us stuff that I've never heard of before. I didn't know about certain stuff. And, you know, you showed us photos that, that people had never seen before. I mean, um, I didn't know that you took Jai Tirtha's ashes to the Ganges. Not that I would know, uh, but yeah. it's just the little things from, from Gaudiya history that are important. Um, and uh, it's been great to hear about, you know, I didn't know you were the Guru called teacher at Chaitanya College. Not that I would know, but it's just great. Oh. There's little pieces of, there's little gems from history. Um, not that we, <laughs> it sounds a bit, oh, you're a part of history. You're part of the present as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I actually, when I think of yourself and, and Kundalata, your wife, I think of you very positively in terms of your kind of, your, your older devotees and you're out there, you're preaching and you have this very servant-like attitude and you're very, 
you treat everyone equally. I mean, you, 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 you go to different events with different mats and that's the kind of the way I see it as well. And not into all this kind of institutional nonsense, you know, <laughs> I just want everyone to, to learn about Krishna consciousness, to, to take shelter of, of, of the philosophy of, of, of a guru. And it's kind of also irrelevant who that guru is, as long as they're in the parampara and they're following the principles properly. I don't, it doesn't matter to me which guru they, they well, follow. Ultimately, guru is one. Yes, yeah. Guru Varga. So actually, guru is Sri Krishna himself. Mm, mm, and when we mm. have Guru Dave, we should be thinking this is actually Krishna mm. talking to us through his surrendered servant. So um, it's Krishna. Is is Krishna is in everything actually? He's at the root of it all. So yeah. Um, so you may see different personalities taking on the role as guru. Occasionally they may go astray, but you can't say they were always astray. You know, but as long as they're surrendered to Krishna. Then, then they're guru, but it is Krishna, and we shouldn't. Who, who are we to say? I mean, sometimes devotees might say, "Oh, this guru is much higher than that one." Mm. What do you know? What do we know about who's where? You know, actually, how do you know who's who's the highest? And it's a nonsense idea, really. So it's Krishna. That's how we should see it, and uh, we should be enlivened by it. So it's Krishna's mercy, that the external manifestation of Krishna mm. to wake us up because we're looking out, trying to see everything through our senses instead of looking within. Because uh, also the super soul in the heart is also Sri Guru. Mm. So, uh, Krishna very kindly sends his external manifestation to save us from ourselves you know, so, yeah. You know, I think that's actually a very nice note to end on, uh, that great kind of philosophical um, uh, um, teaching, uh, truth. Um, so, um, yeah, Trilokanath Prabhu, it's been, a, it's, gr it, it, uh, it's been great to have you as the 75th guest on the Harry Christians in Britain podcast. Uh, I'm just going to say goodbye to the viewers at home. We can have a very brief debrief after uh, but I really appreciate your time in giving us a bit of a dotted history, I guess, of of the Hare Krishna movement, certainly in the 80s and the, some of the things that were going on. Uh, so a big thank you to you for, for being a guest. And I hope lots of people will kind of tune in to watch this podcast um, uh, either on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, and if you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook, please do put a positive comment. And if you're watching it on Facebook, you can like, love, or care for it. Those are the different emojis that you can do. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please do hit the subscribe button to this channel, the Harry Christian Project channel, so you can keep updated about future podcasts. Uh, so until next week, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Harry Krishna. Hare Krishna.